It had been an unusually warm February day in Grand Rapids, Michigan, when Nate Wabenga and some friends went skateboarding downtown. Before I knew it, Seth was like, hey, like, you know, I'm gonna climb on top of this building. And then another one of my friends, Hunter, also was like, hey, I'll go up there with you. Seth Alfaro and another friend wanted to catch the sunset. But when they got to the top, Seth decided to jump down to the adjacent building, an abandoned, empty auto shop. And before you knew it, we heard like a bang. And then Hunter was screaming at the top of his lungs. This dude literally jumped off there and is down 14 feet. Dude, Seth, are you all right? Nate and the others broke into the shop to find Seth lying on the floor, unconscious and fighting for breath. Jumped the roof, literally fell 14 oh, feet. We knew it was very serious. There was the thought that like he might not make it. They called 911 and Seth was taken to Spectrum Health Center in critical condition. Soon after, his parents, Christopher and Christine, were met by a police officer at their home. And the first thing she said was, Seth Alfaro had a bad accident. And my first thought was that he was dead. They rushed to the ER where a trauma doctor told them what happened. He told us that he had fallen about 25 feet and that he had bleeding in the brain. They had already done a CAT scan. They hadn't been able to get any response from him. I said, could he die? from this, and he said, yes, he could. Doctors also said if he did survive, the odds were against a full recovery. Seth was sedated and put in a cold, dark room to try to reduce the swelling on the brain. They said, there's nothing we can do for the damage that's done from the fall. They said, our job now is to keep the swelling down, to keep him alive, and I just put my head down and I said, Lord, you got to help me. I can't do this. That's all we did was pray nonstop. I mean, nonstop. If I paced the room, it was just prayers after prayers after prayers. Over the next several days, Christine's sister kept friends and family updated on Facebook. I like to think of it as this wave of faith that just held us up. And it was like immediately everybody jumped on a miracle. It was some of those posts, some of those prayers. You didn't feel like you were alone. You just felt like you were surrounded by prayer. Eventually, doctors felt Seth would survive. Now the family prayed for a full recovery. I did worry for sure about what, what, kind, of life what kind of life he'll have. How much of Seth? Will we ever really see Seth again? A week later, the swelling had gone down enough for doctors to do an MRI. The results showed extensive brain shearing. We heard shearing, that's all I heard. He didn't say anything else and knew. Okay, now we're looking at the worst case scenario. Dr. Sam Ho explains. Well, shearing is almost like you're a sandpaper, you shear. So like the brain torsion and so on. So the mental function is not gonna be good. You're affecting the speech, you're affecting the processing. People with this type of picture generally don't do well. Doctors told Chris and Christine they should start looking at long-term care facilities for their son. Still, the family continued asking God for a miracle. No, we're not a people of despair. And so it was important to us as a family to, to just rest in what, you know, all things work for the good of those who love and serve him and called to his plan. That was the mentality. Doctors started bringing Seth out of sedation, looking for any signs of healing. First began with him kind of having slits, you know, just barely, you know, he'd open his eyes. We're like, hey, Seth, how are you doing? And then he closed his eyes. As each day passed, they brought with them new signs of hope. He was reaching for some of us, like his nephews. He put his arm around them. He, when I was sitting on the, on his bed, he grabbed me and, and hugged me. And that was like amazing. After two weeks, Seth was transferred to the Mary Freebed Rehab Center. His progress was so rapid, his doctors couldn't keep up. The physical therapist was like, I don't even know how to plan for him. Like, I'll see him one day, make a plan for the next day. I get there the next day, he's already passed it. To be able to recover in such a fast pace itself is already amazing. But to the extent of how he recovered and the uh, Ray that he recovered, 
is incredible. On March 30th, 2017, only six and a half weeks after his accident, Seth walked up the steps to his home on his way to a full recovery. They expected me to be at Mary Freebed or at the rehabilitation center for 10 weeks at least, and then go on to assisted care living. And I left in four weeks and was jogging out of the hospital. <laughs> Prayer does so much more than you could like ever even imagine. I just thank God every day, like, oh my goodness, like, thank you, you know? Today, Seth has no residual issues from the fall, only a renewed faith in the one who saved him. God knew when he healed Seth, he was also answering hundreds of thousands of people's prayers because he knew then what would come of it later and how many people he could reach through it. And that's amazing. That was the other part of the miracle was the body of believers mm -hmm. surrounding a hurting family and surrounding us with prayers to get us through this time. And, you know, that's, that's the thing I'm thankful for. God, like, is a miracle. And it's, it's I don't know, I just keep saying, like, I'm so blessed, but, like, there's nothing I did. That was all, that was all God.